welcome all of you for coming back to see me and the program that I have to offer to you called Sisters in the Spirit. And this gentleman sitting next to me, I was inspired because the previous show, they were talking about real men. And I want to introduce you to somebody that has been in my world that has helped me move the challenges as my, in my adult life. And this is my beautiful husband who has been very supportive. Remember I told you that there are men out in the community who understand who we are as women of color. My program is about Sisters in the Spirit. Black women learning that they can be empowered and blessed because they are great. The original goddesses uh, and they're beautiful. The original mothers of everyone. And we can be blessed. You cannot say women of color, that all men are bad, they're this, that, and the other. When you negate who and what it is that you want in your life, then you create that reality. I'm a metaphysical teacher, counselor, and we believe in creating our own reality. And you can come out of bad realities and make new ones for yourself. And my job here is to help you to understand how to do that. I've been a single woman, and I've been married before. But you have to know that there is a greater gift for you if you put it in your mind, ladies. You are wonderful. You are beautiful African descendant women, black women of color. As I always want to share with you, we are important. We are valuable. We are the original mothers of everyone on this planet. The microchronial DNA shows that. It's been found in the skeletal remains of Lucy in Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Mother Africa. Now, this gentleman is here on the show. He comes with me all the time. And the previous program, the gentleman was talking about real men. Now, this gentleman right here, my husband, used to come back into the community and mentor the boys in the community. Now, how did you do that, honey? Through what uh, avenues? Football, basketball, and uh, spiritual insight, the Bible, teach them what the Bible is. God headship, like 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 they should know the headship of man is to be head of his household and to be ruler of his family and to control his family and also teach his wife but, to but how, we have how a call to raise on his children. Right now, darling. Yes. So my husband is, I will say, a Baptist. So he is very conservative, but he he appreciates me and my spirituality, which is more progressive. Yes, we have a caller. Caller, uh, can we have your your name and your comment or question that you have? Yes, Carla. Okay, well, what we're going to do is continue. My husband is from the traditional Baptist faith, but he's progressive enough to appreciate who I am and what I am about. So that's what I'm trying to say. You and that significant other may not be on the same page, but what's important is that you have that spiritual connection. Caller. We have a caller. Caller, can I have your name and um, what it is that your question or statement, or is that my guest that's calling in? So if it's my guest that's calling in, please let us have what it is that you want to talk about. I, Introduce yourself. I am. Guys. I am. Uh, I'm your guest. <laughs> so this is. Is this? Is this? I'm your guest calling. Um, is this Beatrice? Beatrice, thank you for calling in. Friend. I got Michael sitting with me tonight, and Beatrice is a dear friend, and um, and we met her in our travels on this planet through the things we have been going through as a couple, and she's a beautiful woman that cares about the youth in our community, and that has been the thing that we have been most concerned about, the violence and how the youth, and I'm not talking about, it's not so much the babies, killing babies, but the youth that we call, because we're older people, that are in their 20s, even uh, all the way down, and they're killing the children, they're killing of each other, and it's just sad. Now, Beatrice, tell us something about yourself. Well... I have been very active and concerned in the community for quite a while. I um, was working with the um, with the economic program during the 1960s and 70s, actually during the 70s and 80s, and I do know that there were a lot of programs that were enforced at that time that was very helpful in our communities, and those programs are gone in the wind right now. I think that one of the solutions we have to help Michael and other men to uh, do the job that they need to do in our community is to bring back those that after school programs. Uh, she was talking about the after school programs and, and what else? Have, uh, jobs during the summer that helps them to um, 
you know, feel good about themselves and to look forward to something that they can be a part of and, and, and contribute to. Also, and I won't hog this, but I also think that um, the work release program with, where we have a lot of men of color in prison coming out of, out of prison, that they should have something to look Good evening. We're having a little technical difficulty here. Well, with Beatrice uh, and I'm not going to say this about. I'm not going to say this about all women. But yes. There is a significant number of women out there in the community, and they get and they got this uh, thought that they don't need no man. They can get along all <laughs> by themselves without a man. Who and I'm just talking about this certain mentality. And we got in the community we call the thuggest mother or the uh, gangster type mother, and we got a lot of them. They put all this hell in children. And you got mothers out here, they telling their son, don't take no crap off no woman. Don't let no B tell you what to do. And we got, let's just call it like we got some women, they put all this hell in these children out here in the community. And they go out here and it manifests itself in terms of a lot of the violence that we have. People don't want to talk about it. But guess what? It's there. In our community, we got to deal with it in terms of these, these women out here saying, hey, I don't need no man. I can raise a child all by by myself, and they um, uh, they put down the men in the community. Well, I understand your point, but um, and this is why I'm here uh, to present this organization to give women a more positive spiritual in insight as to their world. As I said, whatever you create in your mind, we have that power to do that, then if you say all men are this, that, and the other, if you say I don't need any men, I, you know, I mean, I've got my degree in psychology, and that's just reverse. I'm just calling the way that's, I see it. That's, put, they, that's putting they, that on somebody it, else. I see it every day out of my community. Go to overhead. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have something I need to show you again, and that is the uh, meeting uh, poster that I have for my meeting, and it has to do with meeting on Sundays at 3 p.m. at my house in my apartment with a lot of uh, gatherings of women who can deal with these issues. Now, the other thing that I want to make, the point that you're making, is that it's true. And that's why I'm here, to try to help women to understand that you create your reality. Now, we have a caller. We have another caller on the line. Could we have your question or statement, yes, please? Yes, I um, was listening. This is Beatrice again. Thank you, Beatrice. Thank you. Yeah, I was listening to the young lady um, yes. just before. And I, I understand her frustration because that is her reality. Yes. And so we cannot ignore her reality. And um, what I'd like to say to the uh, young sisters out there and the young women uh, is pick your mate. Don't let your mate pick you. In other words, you, when you meet a young man, you know what, you're, what you require. You, are, uh, you, have to have, you have to have faith in yourself and you have to love yourself and then know that you are a prize to any man that gets you. So then you have to hold him up to certain standards. So if he's not held up to certain standards, then he is going to come to you any way that he feels that he can get away with. But you have certain uh, qualities, and you hold him up to those qualities, and you will have a far better relationship with your man as well as with your children. If they can see that you feel good about yourself and you're concerned about who you bring into their lives, then you would be, you see a great deal of difference in that. And so this is why I was so inspired before I came on to do the show at this moment by the gentleman that had the other show talking about real men. And I will say that I've been blessed and I've realized that after living the life I've lived, which has been straight, but also going through the things that all women go through to be able to survive and to be blessed with this beautiful gentleman that was sitting next to me. Now, he has his own individual blues, views about religion, but he's progressive enough in his mind that he can accept me. And what I like about him, he has those qualities and characteristics of what you call a real man. So this is the issue. What is a real man? Because even I myself did not know. So I've been married before also. So what I am right now is showing to you, ladies out there in the audience, that these men do exist, but it's a creation of your own reality. Once you believe it, you can achieve it 
thoughts are things. But I'm here with the women's group. They help to help you to guide and understand spiritually, psychologically, and sociologically who you are, what you are, and the power that you have connected to the creative power of the universe. We can change our realities. Beatrice knows that, and all the ladies that are my peers who understand have been through life and have achieved different things in their life, but it's your choice. Some women may not really want to have a male companionship. That's your right too. But you want to feel that confidence and self-respect within yourself and love of yourself so you can choose whatever way that you wish to go that is good and good for you and all those in your world. What say you, Beatrice? So do we have another caller? Please call in at the bottom. The number to call in is 312-738-1060. 312-738-1060. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have that example for you of this beautiful husband that I have in my life that I had to grow and develop to receive in my life. We have another caller. Yes, caller. Give us your name, your question or statement, please. Yes, caller, don't this be shy, speak up. Again, uh, there's something uh, with the lines that after I get through talking. Um, yes? This is Beatrice. Yes, Beatrice, your line keeps, is it your line maybe yeah, dropping? So what happens with the line is once we... <laughs> so it may be the technical... It keeps technical dropping these after I ask you a question. It keeps dropping once I talk. Okay, well, let me, let me continue on then, Beatrice. Just relax for a second and enjoy the show. So as I'm saying to all of you out there who are viewing male and female, this is the work that I have been given to do uh, to help males as well as females. But this calling out came after I woke up from a Coleman, and I asked the uh, life force, the higher power, and it said go back to the women's group. So I know that we as the mothers, we have the boys and the girls that come through our bodies if we so choose, and we are the ones that are the immediate first teachers of our children as mothers. So I want to encourage you black women. And I looked at the, at, at the mother uh, who lost her child just the other day, Dwayne Wade's uh, cousin. She's lost two girls to killing and murdering on the street. And that was just horrifying. So who are the mothers of these two boys who did the killing? Where is that mother? What, what are those mothers? What is that mother? Where is her mindset that she would allow that to happen? See, we say that it takes a man. Now, come on now. Let us not be sexist in our concept. But a woman can take her sons. I have a girlfriend in Indiana who raised her two boys. They did not get into drugs. They both got college degrees. And that girl worked hard. She worked a 24-7 shift on her job. But she was determined to raise them so they would not get caught up in that drug culture and the gang culture. And I say that it can be done. It's a spiritual walk, but I'm here to help you to understand that. Again, let me say this to you, that I do have my women's meeting on yeah, but, or but, gathering yeah. on Sundays at 3 p.m. The number on here is the number for my, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. I believe I can make this bigger. Is it number two? Let me see. Yeah. So that's, this is the, uh, the, uh, the flyer that shows my meetings, my gathering. There you go. Now that's the email address. I'm going to try to get this so you can also get the phone number. You call me after the show. Let me lift this up a little bit here. And then you can call me and we can talk about what it is you may need to have yourself go through in order to get over the woundedness. That's why we have Sisters in the Spirit. That's why it was given to me again this time. So the meetings I said are Sunday at 3 p.m. Call this number. Come by and you, I'll give you the address. And then you can come by and we can meet on Sundays. Every Sunday at 3 p.m. No charge. The other thing I want to share with you is that there is structure to what it is that I'm doing. There's a 12-step program that I have that is about woundedness. It's called Emotions Anonymous. And it's about the woundedness that we may have as individuals. It's not just for women. It's also for men. But it was founded in 1971 by two Caucasian ladies and a psychologist that realized that there was some need that we had to developing ourselves emotionally. 
So the mental issue is fed into that too. Emotions feed into the mental. And the thing is, it's a 12-step program copying the AAA program. So I'm saying to all of you, come by. This will help you deal with issues of abandonment, feelings of nobody cares, and learning how to care about yourself. Those things that we need to know as women are important so we can develop a, self, a sense of self-worth and value. Now I want to read something. This portrait, exactly, this brochure says, Welcome to a new way of life. There's a serenity prayer on here. Let me read a little something from here. It says, um, <clears throat> Anonymous EA is a fellowship of all ages and backgrounds who together want to share personal experiences, hope as we work towards recovery from our emotional difficulties. Recovery from emotional difficulties. Learn how to form a new way of life by using the 12-step program to help us find serenity. Those who are welcome, uh, welcome to attend EA meetings and the only requirement for uh, membership is the outcome well emotionally, is the awareness, the desire to become well emotionally. I'll put this down for a second. And having gone through the program myself, I know that it has helped me to heal help to build my confidence and self-worth. As I said, I've been married before, just like my guest is called. She's been married before. But what happens as you go along this road, some of us, and I say myself, have learned spiritually that I didn't even know what a real man looked like. Because that's why I could say, I don't, some of you can say, I don't need a man. There's the caller calling back again. That may be Beatrice. Yes, Beatrice, is that you or a new caller? It's a new caller. Say that again. It's a new caller. Hi. It's a new caller. What is your question, please? Yes. Uh, first of all, I'm in total agreement with you that um, a woman can raise children. God bless me to raise four children alone as a single parent. It can be done, but only with the help of the Lord. And I'd like to ask you a question. Why do you, um, when you mention about um, God, why do you say the higher power and the divine, why don't you just say God or Jesus? Well, you can say God. Yes, you can. God has many names, but the spiritual essence of what God is, is unconditional love. And higher power is what's talked about in the 12-step program because it does not want to offend anyone of any religious belief. Because as you know today, this, this organization, 12-step AA, was formed in the 30s by an alcoholic doctor and an alcoholic salesman, two Caucasian males. And what happened was they were arresting and putting drunks in jail back then. But the point was they, they were given this concept because it was thought that, and it is true today, that you have people who are in traditional religions that are being abused. Now, one example today is the Catholic Church. Look at the priests that have been accused of molesting children. There are many people, just because they're pastors and ministers, that have their own sickness and illness, and they abuse children and young teens, uh, and some of them go off into drugs, alcohol, promiscuous behavior. So this is why 12 Step, I believe, it was so far-sighted and so spiritual that it does not deal with any religious concept. It's a spiritual program. Until you have attended, gone to some open meetings, then you really don't know. And I have found in my travels that many church members look down on 12 Step and they have never set foot in an open meeting that you, you can ask, you can come to an open meeting and find out it's very spiritual. See, what happened to us as black people, we had been enslaved and, and we believed in this Christian faith that, that we adopted to because being highly spiritual people, we took it and made it our own because remember the slave master gave us that Bible. And you don't realize this, but we were, we were overseen. In other words, when the, the black male master spoke to the congregation, somebody was watching. Remember now, we were just come out of, we were still African slaves or African Americans generationally as time went by. And we still were being controlled by the white supremacist masters in the South. And, you know, I would say in the South, but there were points somewhere up north where we still were not thought highly of. But in the South, those pastors 
were being watched. So they would not tell the truth of set my people free, okay? Because we were needed to be laborers for free for years. We're talking about a couple of hundred years, 300 years. That's a long time. As I said before, I have a degree in psychology. And there's an issue of a video that we were shown called Pavlov's dog. That that dog was trained uh, to salivate every time a bell rung. It's called conditioning. That's the class you take. We as black people have been conditioned. And we don't even know it. We're talking about hundreds of years. So when, when we don't say... When we look at 12-step, when we look at those things that are outside traditional religion as black people, we need to be careful. We need to know our sociological, cultural history in this country and around the world. We don't know that black people are all around the world. Did you know in Fiji Islands, those are African descended people in the Fiji Islands? They're not all Polynesian. You know, and when you talk about the Aborigines, what color are they? See, we, we, are so, we have been so broken down and beaten down that we don't, recognize, we don't realize and recognize our value and self-worth. And we held on to that Christian Bible. I want to say to all of you, getting back to the point, that as women, we can grow and develop to a higher power. God is God, higher power, divine force, life force, that which created each and every one of us, no matter what our race, no matter what our culture, whatever our ethnicity, or even our gender. Because we need to stop judging each other and have the freedom of mind to recognize we are all valuable. You have the environments, you have the Native Americans who believe in the land and nature. We have a caller. Yes, caller. What is your uh, question or statement? This is uh, Beatrice again. Hi, Beatrice. Um, yeah, first of all, um, we have to learn as women, especially, to start loving ourselves because... If you can't love yourself, it's impossible to love your neighbor, or your husband, your mate, your children, because there, as you said before, there there's a hurt inside of you that that kills you like cancer. So unless you you start loving yourself and love and and, and elevating yourself to the level that God has intended you to be, because. Each of us is so unique in our own way, and we have talent. God gives us the innate ability to survive, not just to survive, but to be great because he has given us that ability. But we have to know that within ourselves, yes. and we have to stop hating each other. That's what's uh, bringing about all this crime and all this violence because, as uh, one caller said, when you pass that hate on or that that hurt on that you have acquired from some past relationship or someone that has made you upset or angry, you pass it on to your children, and your children pass it on to society. And so we have got to start putting love back into our homes, love back into our hearts, and teaching our children to love, and teaching our children about history so they won't go out thinking, well, society owes me this, so I can take it from you, or I can take it from this next person. Teach that child that you can also grow, and you can also be a part of a thriving society. Yes. All you have to do is look at the gifts that God has put into you and to cultivate that gift. That's mainly what we need to start doing, is to love ourselves and to teach our children love and discipline. Thank you so much, Beatrice. That is so beautiful. If we have any other callers, please, you can call in 312-738-1060. And I thank all of you for calling in and listening in. Uh, we have a caller on the line. Yes, caller? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, I have one more question. I'd like to know, is your 12-step program based upon the Holy Bible? What is your basis for the 12-step program? It was based on the inspiration that these, these people got from, uh, how can I put it? When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, it's really, it's really amazing. I can give you an example of that for myself. I was woke up one night. <laughs> this voice woke me up and gave me instructions. So that's what the Holy Spirit is here for us. And I want to say to all of you out there that spiritual, spiritual walk it's the spiritual walk. And you learn how to listen and be a... It is, it, there is something other than ourselves. It's in our DNA. So I want to say to all of you, come to the meeting on Sunday at 3 p.m. 
called me. I wanted to go this overhead one more time, but the show is cut off. And that overhead is showing you the phone number and uh, how to get in touch with me. So you can come to the meeting on Sunday at 3 p.m. I want to thank all of you. Peace and blessings until next Thursday. Thank you.